For the Supreme Court to continue fulfilling our mandate effectively, close interinstitutional and collaboration and support are vital. Upholding the rule of law and protecting constitutional rights is a collective responsibility that calls for cooperation and respect among the judiciary, the legislature and the executive and other state agencies. I therefore call on collaborative relationship that will strengthen our resilience of our legal system and allow the Supreme Court and the wider judiciary to serve as a true pillar of justice. Over the past 12 years, the Supreme Court has played a transformative role in shaping both Kenya's jurisprudence and shaping our country's social political development. This court's landmark judgments have influenced the daily lives of Kenyans while reinforcing the core principles of our democracy. Through hearing and determining four presidential election petitions over the last three election cycles, the court has set critical benchmarks for conducting free, fair, and transparent elections. Likewise, through the landmark advisory opinions on devolution and the relationship between the bicameral houses of parliament, the Supreme Court has developed guiding frameworks that clarify interactions between the National Assembly and the Senate, reinforcing devolution as a cornerstone of our transformative constitution. Furthermore, in defining the parameters for constitutional amendments in the BBI case and establishing principles of public participation in the BAT and recently in the Finance Act cases, the court's jurisprudence has strengthened the democratic foundations of governance and harmonizing the judiciary's benchmark on the areas of public participation that still requires parliamentary action. The court's decisions have also directly addressed issues of land rights, human rights, social and economic justice, and family law. In the same vein, the courts have addressed housing rights jurisprudence in the Me Too Bell cases, which reflects the court's commitment to socioeconomic rights. The courts uh, has set jurisprudence guiding the families on how to help hold the family as the cornerstone of our society. In these and countless other judgments, the Supreme Court has affirmed its role as a transformative agent in the society. There is need, therefore, for checks and balances between the three arms of government without overreach or interference. Comity of the three arms of government is a cornerstone of our constitution. Mutual respect is a necessary condition for the coexistence of the executive, legislature, and the judiciary, all who have one clear calling to serve the citizens of this great nation. Through landmark decisions, advisory opinions in moments of national impasse and precedence, we have strengthened our democratic foundation, and I believe the Supreme Court has continually sought to ensure that justice prevails for all Kenyans. This conference offers an invaluable opportunity to reflect deeply on the court's journey and to consider its impact and future direction of its jurisprudence. We will examine the paths paved by our decisions on critical issues, including presidential election disputes, constitutional questions, human rights, devolution, and so much more. The range of conference activities include public lectures, panel discussions, moot courts, interactive exhibitions, and stakeholder engagements, where we seek to enrich understanding 
and encourage dialogue about the future of the Supreme Court. I really want us to appreciate the judiciary of the Republic of Kenya. Because Your Excellency, without them, this would not be a destination for investment. We congratulate you for the number of years that you've had. We have had ups and downs in this country, but everyone has always known that there will be objectivity in your findings. But your objectivity also must not mean popularity. It must mean just doing the right thing. I was thinking this morning when I came, what does it feel like to be a judge of the Supreme Court? I don't know, Emeritus Mutunga, how does it feel like? Chief Justice Maraga, it's almost a godlike. The finality of your decision, you know? I would draw you to one of the points by Khalil Gibran on uh, punishment and crime. And he speaks to it, that that must be exercised in a way that is judicious. Because ultimately, the ultimate judge is God. I really admire the judges of the Supreme Court that we have. You exemplify, you know, that attribute that this country must be. And even us in other arms of government, we look up to you. On behalf of governors, I thank you. Because you have stood for devolution. You have supported devolution in this country. I remember as a senator marching to court, we frog marched our speaker. He didn't want to go. He's now a governor, Lusaka. He's governor again. We told him, you must go. Because at that point, we felt devolution was under threat. The deputy president was also there, marching to the court, uh, Professor Kindiki. But we found solace. And many times, the judgments will not be popular to us or acceptable, but they must be respected. And so I am happy that we have judges who are immune to popularity. You don't have to make a decision whether it, that is popular. Leave popularity to President William Ruto, Professor Kindiki, PCS, and ourselves. We are the ones who want to be popular with the people. But for you, just do what is right, as sober as a judge, and our country will remain solid. For the Supreme Court to continue fulfilling our mandate effectively, close interinstitutional and collaboration and support are vital. Upholding the rule of law and protecting constitutional rights is a corrective responsibility that calls for cooperation and respect among the judiciary, the legislature, and the executive, and other state agencies. I therefore call on collaborative relationship that will strengthen our resilience of our legal system and allow the Supreme Court and the wider judiciary to serve as a true pillar of justice. Over the past 12 years, the Supreme Court has played a transformative role in shaping both Kenya's jurisprudence and shaping our country's social political development. This court's landmark judgments have influenced the daily lives of Kenyans while reinforcing the core principles of our democracy. Through hearing and determining four presidential election petitions over the last three election cycles, the court has set critical benchmarks for conducting free, fair, and transparent elections. Likewise, through the landmark advisory opinions on devolution and the relationship between the bicameral houses of parliament, the Supreme Court has developed guiding frameworks that clarify interactions between the National Assembly and the Senate, reinforcing devolution as a cornerstone of our transformative constitution. Furthermore, in defining the parameters for constitutional amendments in the BPI case and establishing principles of public participation in the BAT and recently in the Finance Act cases, the court's jurisprudence has strengthened the democratic foundations of governance and harmonizing the judiciary's benchmark on the areas of public participation that still requires parliamentary action. The court's decisions have also directly addressed issues of land rights, human rights, 
social and economic justice and family law. In the same vein, the courts have addressed housing rights jurisprudence in the Me Too Bell cases, which reflects the court's commitment to socioeconomic rights. The courts uh, have set jurisprudence guiding the families on how to help hold the family as the cornerstone of our society. In this and countless other judgments, the Supreme Court has affirmed its role as a transformative agent in the society. Mm -hmm.